Hello friends. Today I will talk about, hydrogen cars an eco-friendlier alternative to electric? Let's get started. The battery has continued its triumphant march for many years, more and more devices, such as mobiles, light-up trainers for children, and even cars, are equipped with them. Electric and hybrid vehicles are slowly starting, to dominate the streets with the full support of governments, and a growing contingent of consumers due to their presumed green credentials. From a sustainability standpoint, the question remains whether battery technology for cars is greener and therefore, better? Is such unilateral support for electric vehicles, justified or should we be focusing our attention on hydrogen to power our vehicles in the future? Availability the production of hydrogen from natural gas by catalytic reforming has been used in manufacturing processes for many years. With the development of proton exchange membrane PEM, hydrogen, especially for the non-industrial sector as for example transport, is produced from the water via electrolysis. The hydrogen and battery operated vehicles both need an increasing amount of electricity preferably from new renewable power stations such as solar or wind farms. The challenge going forward will not only be the energy revolution with replacing existing thermal and nuclear power plants, but also meeting increasing demand if these green energy generating sources are also to be used to produce hydrogen. Sustainability Both, the fuel cell, platinum, ruthenium, and the batteries, cobalt, lithium, need rare minerals. Platinum, ruthenium, and cobalt are usually mined as byproducts of copper and nickel. This type of production leaves large craters on the earth and degrades the environment. The largest lithium deposits are located in the so-called lithium triangle between Bolivia, Argentina, and Chile, in Chile's Atacama Desert where three salt lakes form a huge lithium reservoir. To produce lithium, the groundwater, rich in minerals, the brine, is pumped into massive artificially created basins for targeted evaporation. The extraction of the brine from the groundwater causes the groundwater level to drop and dries up the riverbeds and surrounding farms and wetlands. Farm and grazing lands are lost, rare bird species threatened and mangroves that characterize this ecosystem are drastically altered. The local, mostly indigenous population suffers from degradation, loss of land, and lack of water. Efficiency The weight of the battery in an electric vehicle which weighs several hundred kilograms is a clear disadvantage. The weight of battery-driven vehicles reduces the range and is exasperated whenever electric vehicle owners drive a mix of short, city, and long distances. The most efficient in this case should be two separate vehicles for short and long distances which is absolutely not sustainable. Recycling There exist several pilot recycling technologies for used batteries of electric vehicles, one possibility is to shred the vehicle battery into small pieces with subsequent treatment in acid baths, where the resulting oxides and salts can be used to build new batteries. Cobalt and nickel form an alloy that can be reused. Another problem for battery-operated vehicles is the transport chain, for batteries in case of damage to the vehicle. There is still a lot of research necessary in order to have a sustainable treatment of used car batteries but also the sustainable process to win high quality materials back from an old fuel cell is currently under development with the only surplus that the big mass of used fuel cells will come only in a few years. Fuel With the mass rollout of new renewable generation units such as solar panels and windmills consumers should adapt their demand according to the availability of electricity. This is possible with hydrogen production based on electrolysis and its accompanying flexibility. Hydrogen will only be produced whenever there is enough solar irradiation or wind available. The electricity to charge a battery, on the contrary, has to be instantaneously produced which does not support the energy revolution. With an increasing number of electric vehicles, charging a number of vehicles at the same time will result in a grid capacity challenge. The economic solution will be different prices for instantaneous and slow charging. The technical remedy is either the rollout, out of the smart grid technology, or a massive extension of the existing grid infrastructure, but both solutions, will be extremely expensive. The way forward. The incentive to change from a combustion engine to a hydrogen and or battery operated one may be achieved through regulation, for example access to cities, or tax incentives. A game changer might be Hyundai in Europe, 
the company wants to import 1,600 heavy hydrogen trucks to Switzerland by 2025, to serve as their European hub and they are willing to invest in the infrastructure, fueling stations. Car manufacturers with a tradition in hydrogen vehicles such as Toyota, Mirai, Hyundai, Nexofuel, and maybe some Chinese manufacturers may take this opportunity to enter the European market. People will remain climate sensitive, particularly in light of the corona pandemic, which means the race between hydrogen and battery-operated technology has now officially started. Other companies such as Alpic and H2 Energy, who are cooperating with Hyundai and Alpic, are making attempts to increase the production of hydrogen and a filling network. However, it will likely take additional political influence, and investors with big pockets to make a significant step forward. Thank you for watching. If you found out something new, like and subscribe to the channel for more videos, see you on the internet.